Hello, welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. You're joining me from the Rolex restaurant in Woodlands. Remember, we were here last time, we ate some beautiful Mozambican food. We're here today, and uh, today I'm gonna be chilling with Michi. But before we go on and chat with Michi, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel, invite your friends to subscribe, and also a reminder, the African Food Festival is on on the 1st of October. And you can actually purchase a ticket right here at the Rolex restaurant. So I hope you guys will be there. Let me chat with Michi on the other side. Hey guys, I'm here with the Zambian sweetheart. Hi. Hi Helen, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to be on the show. I think the first time we did this was like... How many years ago? Six, seven years ago, I think. Is it a long years Four years? Ago? I think it should be four years. Wasn't it six? How am mm. I doing my math? I wasn't... Was I Miss Zambia? You were already Miss Zambia. But this should it was have been after more than Miss six. Zambia. It should have been six years ago. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, Helen. How are you? I'm good. I always say this. You are the Miss Zambia, the model that has really, like, what, what can I say? You've really, like, uh, you're level-headed. Mm. That's the word. Mm. I don't know how you do it, but yeah. I guess that's why you're a Zambia sweetheart. Nah. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. How are things, though? Things are okay. I, I, I won't complain much. Yeah. I mean, life is life. Uh -huh. You have your ups, you have your downs, but yeah. things are okay. How's Overall. work? Work is fun. Work is fun. It's um, trying to do, you know, radio, TV, and, and the other stuff in the background at the same time, and mm. trying to stay sane at the same time. Yeah. But um, it's, it's all good. It's wanted, all good. I wanted to ask how you do it, because I feel like you, you do so much. You have to wange, you have radio, you have my kitchen party, you have voiceovers. Yeah. So much, I think I can go and send. <laughs> But good for you. Yeah. Plus, you have all these brands that you're promoting. Mm. I I don't know. How, I don't know. But what is one thing that you do to help you, you know, sober up from mm. everything? What do you do? What do I do? I think I, I huh. spending time with like family, friends does help to just kind of level everything out and make it seem manageable. Mm. But one of my guilty pleasures is I like to color. Like in coloring books, like an actual child. So coloring books, like the ones that we buy for babies. Yes, right? <laughs> I don't even get, because there's adult coloring books where you can color like buildings, but I get the actual, you get Sophia the first coloring <laughs> book, and you're coloring Sophia the Serious? first dress, her skin. Yes, I color. And that kind of like, it's yeah. weird, but it, it brings me back to like, okay. Yeah. We're good. We're okay. No, I can't love you. I play games on the what phone. Games right now, I'm playing Project Makeover. Well, that sounds like fun. That sounds like some adult-ish fun, not no, like yeah. age-appropriate fun. Yeah. But for me, I'm fighting like six years, like mine. mine. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, yeah. but but at least it helps you stay sane because you need to stay sane still. Absolutely. We have to keep seeing that smile. Absolutely. What is the one job that you enjoy doing among us all of them that you will say, yeah, today we're doing this. I'm excited. The one job I enjoy doing the most, I would say voiceovers. Yeah, I, I have fun with voiceovers, especially when um, it's something completely different and out of like my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like currently, I can't speak much about it, but yeah. there's an animation that may or may not happen. Oh, but I'll okay. say it will happen because decree it and has declare. To happen, yeah. So it's a cartoon, so it's different, and and I'm having to explore these different sides of my voice and yeah. just. It's so much fun. So I would say voiceovers. I think your voice will sound good in a cartoon. <laughs> because I'm, I'm kind of seeing your personality <laughs> like, yeah, it yeah. kind of sits well with a cartoon character. Yeah. That's so. good. I, I hope it happens so that we can actually watch and hear your voice on doing it. Yeah. Now, you, you have been doing, uh, from modeling, I know you studied law. Mm -hmm. you, you've studied how many things? So law and marketing. Yeah, and marketing. Bachelor of Commerce in Marketing. Yeah, yeah. then you went on to to do Miss Zambia, you won, mm -hmm. and then you kind of buried the side of um, law side of things. Yeah. You're so into the media space. Media marketing, they kind of work together, I think. Yeah. So, but law, have you ever practiced? No, I've never practiced. That's the thing. I, I didn't uh, go as far as, you know, getting to the bar and, and getting to practice, but 
I still use uh, part of my legal training because part of the work that I do has to, you have to deal with contracts. Yeah. So I, I do um, use that part of the knowledge to work on that side, like the mm. legal stuff, so mm -hmm. that I'm not getting into a job blindsided or, you have to protect yourself yeah, legally that's true. in, in that's this true. industry as well. So it's, it's nice to be able to do that for myself and I don't need to like find like, Oh, hi, lawyer, A, B, and yeah. C. Can you draft me this? Because I can do it myself. Nice. So I still get to use it. I yeah. can hire you to draft things for me. Well, <laughs> I know you can afford me, so <laughs> just give me a call. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Okay, yeah. so, but what made you study law in the first place? Uh, a funny story. I studied law for the wrong reasons because it was Ali McBeal, it was Boston Legal, the oh. shows on TV, they were like, I object and yeah, made especially it look Boston so Legal much will make you feel like, ah, right. this is fun, I want to do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I got into law. It was my first choice. I didn't even think twice about it. I'm going, I'm studying law. And then I walked into the courtroom for the first time, because it was part of our, 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 our our uh, study, our course study. And I'm in the courtroom and I'm like, no. This is not what I see on TV. <laughs> Why is it so slow? It's just like, so you're now, where's the defender? <laughs> I'm like, no. Where is someone like barging into the courtroom? Yeah. And, you know, but I, I do hear that the dramatic stuff does happen from time to time. But then but for me, I was day. so underwhelmed. I was like, Nyeh. yeah. This thing in it. Yeah. So that's how mentally I switched from there. I said I don't see myself going the long haul, mm. but I will get back to it. I, I know for a fact the passion yeah. is still there. Okay. Somewhere. That's yeah. good. That's, were you already uh, in the modeling industry that time? Like mm. the time you were studying law, you had already started. That was it after Miss Miss Zambia. No, no. So the law was before Miss Zambia. Okay. But I had been I've been modeling since I was. Well, technically since I was four years old, but yeah. professionally, I would say since 2008. So mm -hmm. I was studying law in 2009. Okay. So at that time, of course, you heard the, you can't be a lawyer and a model. Because, yes. you yes. know, law is blue suits you have to be and serious. proper. Yeah. So that, there was a little bit of that at that point. It was like, I need to pick a side. I did feel that, mm -hmm. but it wasn't so apparent, although it was there that I had to pick between modeling and law. But at the time that I was actually studying, the modeling side of things had kind of taken a back seat. I hadn't done pageants in like psh, maybe three years, although I was like on runways every now and then. Mm. But uh, heavy, heavy modeling came after when I made the switch and I started doing, when I was studying the BCom in commerce, mm -hmm. when I was studying that degree, um, then the modeling kind of creeped in accidentally and I started at school again, and I was Miss Mulungushi, uh, 2010, 2011. So this was then the build up to Miss Zambia. Okay. So yeah. And uh, I think I've told you this before. I think I've even talked about it in the last, um, the, the last interview we did together. Mm -hmm. The time you guys were like uh, lined up, all these are the contestants. You were like the most laid back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like. I would say the truth. I didn't think you were going to win. I know, and you've told me this. Yeah, yeah literally, you're, you're not even looking at that person because you're seeing all these hyper ladies, yeah. you know, everyone is looking. Then you're just moving from stage to stage, yeah. stage to stage, until you got it. I was even asking Christian, like, she won? Like, yeah, yeah, there's a lot that we look at, and she had it. Yeah, She had it, it was beyond, you know, sometimes people are just excited, but they're not really giving us what we're looking for. Yeah. And I think you've kept that throughout your career. Mm -hmm. How is it like, uh, is it maybe a bringing that has told you to say, look, you can be a model, you don't have to be blown, you don't have to be mm -hmm. this. Is it your upbringing or it is just, it's just natural? A, a lot of it has, has to do with my upbringing, I will say. Um, I come from a family that's very supportive. I think my family has supported me through and through, through everything, especially my mom. Mm -hmm. um, but that, of course, has come with, I think th there were certain things, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. Like at home, growing up, there were things like my mom would say, you can't watch TV before maybe like 14 or 15 hours during the weekend. So what you're doing before is you're reading, you're, you're doing all this stuff that actually like builds your mind and you're teaching yourself. <coughs> So I got to a point where I was very comfortable with, you know, just being in a quiet space and learning and observing. So I became that person. I became more of an observer. 
mm -hmm. and speak when necessary, I guess, yeah. for, the, for lack of a better term. But um, also with things like, with pageants like Miss Zambia, for example, because you, you did bring that up, um, you're around different personalities. Yeah. And some people are loud and they're like, it was intimidating because yeah. some people would like literally wake up, shout out to Zara, and they'll be like, Miss Zambia and Dine. And you're like, <laughs> oh. And you're believing it because you're looking at her and you're yeah. like, she could actually win. But I think, um, Another funny story. While we're still on Zambia, real quick, if I can just yeah. say this story. No, don't worry. Yeah. Cool. So, and two days before the finale, I called my mom and I said I want to leave. I, I can't do it. I want to come home. Mm. Yes. Two days before. Yes. And wow. the, the day itself, I didn't want to do it. I said I, I had a headache. I was sick. I was feeling so much pressure. And I remember my roommate Inonge, shout out to Inonge, um, she was like, "Just do it." I mean, if already gotten this far just do it and my mom also said something similar and she said have fun yeah. don't think about I have to win mm -hmm. learn you've made friends have fun with your sisters it's the last day so make it like you know yeah. your last your your goodbye for now so just mm -hmm. go out there and have fun and the moment that I started thinking like that like I'll take it as a learning experience as something fun and not something that I have to win at I think that's the moment that you kind of put everything else away. Like, I don't care if this person is going to be loud or try to intimidate because I'm, I've gotten what I came here for, which yeah. is the sisterhood, the friendships, the connections. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how I've chosen to look at life. It's not a competition. It's that's true. If I meet you, let's learn, let's network, let's create a bond. If not, either way, I will learn from your experiences just by having our paths having crossed, for lack of a better term. That's a good lesson because your we hear models really. There's a lot of side eyes Ooh. given. <laughs> so I, I like that you had to look at it uh, from that perspective. But how active are you right now? I saw that you were training some models. At some mm. You mm. You're still doing that? Oh yeah. So I'm still training. I, I've taken more of a training role because. Um, obviously, I did the biggest pageant in the country, Miss Zambia. I can't mm. do that and again. Then you went to Miss World. I went to Miss World. I yeah. went to Miss Africa. And these are like once in a lifetime things. It's mm. not like boxing where I can go and defend my title. Like, yeah. 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 Miss Zambia 2014. No. Once you do it once, you're done. Mm. So I've done the big ones. I can't. If I compete now, it would be doing something that's lesser. Mm. Although, what would be open is Mrs. World, if I had a ring on it, which I don't. <laughs> it's coming. In Jesus' name. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mrs. World, there's Mrs. World, there's Mrs. There's, there's all these Mrs. versions now that are, are pretty nice to but look I, at. And I, I, might I like, yeah, I like the, the idea of bringing Mrs. Yes. Yeah, so then people that are actually married or engaged and have had children can still go in and compete. Yeah. because. Um, your Miss competitions, most of them, the, the age limit is like 28. You must be unmarried, not have kids, because yeah. of how demanding the role is once you are crowned. Mm -hmm. So the Misses, I might do that one, but for now, I'm, um, I've taken more of a mentoring and teaching role. Okay. Yeah. How's that going? It's going good. Yeah. Because once, I don't think, like, when you're passionate about something, it never leaves you. Mm -hmm. So just because I can't actively compete doesn't mean that I can't help in that space. Yeah. So because I know what it takes to go out there and win, if I could go back to Miss World, there's so many things I would have done differently. Mm -hmm. So then I'm opening myself up to the girls that want to take that chance yeah. and saying, look, I'm ready to teach you what I know. And if yeah. you're willing to learn, call me up. Nice. Yeah. That is good. So you, I'm sure there's somebody who is already interested. To, if they go on social media, can they know how to apply? Do they need to apply? How do they go about it to be part of your classes? Yeah. So we do advertise whenever we're having a master class. We had the first one in May. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one should be coming pretty soon, actually. So just keep your eyes on Michi Zambia Sweetheart uh, Facebook, Instagram. Okay, yeah. I like. Anyway, so we move on from uh, from that side of your life. We, we go on to radio and TV. How is Tuvanga going? Tuvanga is going great. Yeah. Um, Season yeah. what now? Five. I can't believe Season time flies. five. Time does fly. Yeah. And I, I was laughing the other day because I was thinking about like comparing day one 
to now, it's, yeah. yo, it's so different. It's so different. How is it working with uh, like three different ladies? In the beginning, it was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, because obviously we are very different. Yeah. Obviously, some of us are louder than others. Obviously, <laughs> uh, but it's it's fun because, like I said, like it's it's about learning from the different experiences. And for me, there are a lot of shockers, but a lot of growth, a lot of learning. Because I'm like, oh, so there's people that think like you. Yeah. And you know. Yeah. We all live in the same space, so it's definitely. It's taught me a lot of life lessons to be more accepting, to not judge a book by its cover, for example, and just to be aware of the fact that we are not all the same, and that's okay, and that's what makes life even more interesting. Yeah, we yeah. see a lot of uh, like you know trending topics when you guys don't agree on so many things. How is that after the show? Like the show is done, are you guys upset for real, for real, or it's like okay that was work, let's get back high. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we are never upset, upset, because the thing is, it's, uh, we've agreed that when we are on the show and we're expressing our views, I'm disagreeing with, with your opinion. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you as a person. I'm not saying Helen is bad because she doesn't yeah. think this way. It's like, okay, Helen, you think blonde hair is better than black hair? I think black hair is better than blonde hair. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying Helen is bad for thinking that way. I'm just saying this particular thing you're saying is, I will not agree with it with what I'm saying. So it's not personal, maybe okay. in short. It's not personal and we understand that. I mean, we'll, the director will call cut and will be like, yeah, high five, nice, good job. <laughs> good, yeah. I like that. Because people actually think you guys don't get along like, Oh, these guys don't get along in real life cause, because of the arguments that we see and the fights that we see. But interesting, and uh, you guys should keep up the good work. Okay. Esther left the show. How is that yeah. going for you guys? Um, you know what? I, from the outside looking in, people did pair me and Esther together like we are friends. We yeah. are the close ones. And I, I, I did feel a certain closeness uh, to Esther. It was a different kind of closeness that I feel with the other, my other Tuvange sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt it f for a bit. I was like, oh, Esther is not here. Huh. Yeah. How to navigate this new space. Yeah. But um, Amina is amazing. Amina, of course, is, is our new co-host for, um, she joins Tuvange with season five. And I've known Amina personally for years. So mm -hmm. for me, it was it wasn't like having a new person. It was just mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, now you're in this space and I get to know you from this space now. So it's, it's been a bit of an adjustment, but it's been a good adjustment. It's like adding on to, it's a new form of learning, a new, yeah, yeah a new form of learning, okay. new perspective. Nice. Have you ever fought like for real, for real, not for the show with anybody on, on the show? Like outside the show, mm -hmm. like fought, fought? No. Like, argued or something no no, <laughs> That's no. Good. on the show yes but off the show yeah. on the show i think there was especially earlier on when i was still learning how to be more accepting of other people's opinions yeah i think there were times when i'd have to be told um michi fix your face oh yeah like your facial getting... expressions say a lot of things Yo, <laughs> i'm just like oh, really yeah how? <laughs> But yeah, that was earlier on. Now yeah. it's just, it's vibes. Smooth. It's vibes. I like. Now, uh, let's talk about, uh, recently you posted something to say, you all have a lot of things to say. Something, uh, I can't remember the exact words you used, mm -hmm. but it was like people said something that, I don't know, what happened? Yeah, hey, like, um, I think I, 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 I know better now. I should know better, but sometimes I do forget. Um, sometimes uh, I prefer not to read comments on social media, mm -hmm. but this particular time I forgot and I found myself just scrolling through uh, certain comments. And this happened after the announcement was made that, you know, Esther wasn't going to be a part of the show. Yeah. And I just saw some pretty hurtful stuff that people were saying. And I was like, why? Yeah. So I, I'm a very sensitive person, always have been, and I cry very easily. Yeah. So I will see a comment 
and it would just ruin my day. And there weren't that many, but the ones that were negative were very hurtful. It's like, it's like people know how to construct, <laughs> like with every word, it's like, I'll pierce this person's heart. Yeah. And I felt it, I, I felt bad about it. And I think, and, and obviously the other side of it is you're constantly told to be the bigger person. Yeah. If someone posts something about you, don't respond. But now, is new it's new times it's yeah. a new me if i don't sometimes i can walk away from a comment like okay this person said something bad whatever i'll move on but now if it's in my face especially if it's on my page i will respond i will report so and the block. popo gonna be at your doorstep yeah i will block yeah the truth yeah. is, uh, I think people forget that uh, the person that you're talking to is actually human and they're going to feel, they, uh, maybe they know, they deliberately want to hurt you, Yeah. but sometimes I feel like they forget that, that's why they say, no, 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 don't respond, because they're forgetting that you're also getting hurt. Whatever they're saying keeps on hurting you. Yeah. So that, that, that is sad. I, I saw it, I was like, what happened? What, oh, who hurt our Zambian sweetheart? <laughs> It's but, so wild out yeah, there. Yeah, but it is wild. But uh, generally, have you, have you ever been cyber-bullied? Yes, I have. Oh, I saw something way back. I just remembered on TikTok, you literally switched off your comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, I used to think TikTok is not so bad. I always used to feel like Facebook, because I've really been attacked more on Facebook than anywhere else. So I, I thought, oh, yeah, Instagram, safe space, TikTok. Then I saw some comments. I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I, I deliberately do turn off comments on certain posts, yes. Yeah. Um, I have been cyberbullied. I think my whole life in the public eye, I have been from Zambia. Yeah. And I remember um, I was featured on BBC for Miss Zambia, when I was in Zambia. Mm. And the people that were trolling me and saying bad stuff were Zambians. Like, oh, is this the most beautiful girl we have? She looks like a white, and you know. Yeah. And people that came to my defense were East Africans. Oh my God. Because I, because I, I, I was, I used to be so invested back then. Like I'd read comments and I'd go to your profile and see yeah. where you're from. And it was Kenyans, Tanzanians, and they were like, "You go, girl. You, you've got our support." Because I was talking about going to this world. And that in itself was a bit demoralizing because I'm like, I'm going out there to represent my country when i go out there no one will know me as Mijelo. no they will know me as zambia yeah. and my own zambians are being this mean and i think when i was younger it, it used to it was harder to stomach but with time uh, some things like i said you can turn a blind eye to sometimes you just have to respond yeah there's a guy that called me ronaldinho recently like my dental formula is like ronaldinho and i'm just like where where so then yeah yeah i told him i said just, just uh, i'll send you money for ice cream you look like you need it <laughs> i i think people are angry they have issues yeah yeah they, they, they have issues yeah so how have you been handling it now it's just like you just forget about it but do report i think reporting is important sometimes yes. like if it's too much, because I mean, you have to protect your mental health as well. You yes. are there doing the work for the people that also come back and attack you. So, yo, how is the dating game going? The dating game, well, that was attacked too at some point. Uh, oh. <laughs> yo, a picture was posted and then someone decided they took it and then they added a caption saying, Fila Pua, Fika Pua, Ta Fila Pua. <laughs> um, ah. Yeah. Dating is interesting. Yeah. Navigating the dating space is interesting, especially yeah. when you're a recognizable person. You definitely, I think you need someone that's confident enough in themselves and strong enough with who they are to, to take on someone that's in the limelight. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I have that, so that's, that's cool. How did you know that this is the one? Because I think the one thing that is difficult for a person who's in the limelight to find is the person that though that because you know people will be in love with um, Michi, the Zambian sweetheart, but do they know Michelo? Because mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna be with you, they have to know Michelo, not yes. Michi. So how 
difficult or easy was it for you to find somebody who loves you for you? Somebody who gets to see what we don't see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's... It, finding it isn't the hard part. I think maintaining it is yeah. the difficult part. I've been blessed to have had partners. It sounds like they're a lot eh? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I, prior to this, I, yeah. I had two very long-term relationships. And I've, I've been one of those people that's blessed of people in their lives that's, that just won't give up. They'll be like, I'm here for you. Yeah. And I want to do whatever it takes to make this work. And that, I think that's what helps. So finding the person wasn't too hard. If I tell y'all how I met him, yo. How did you meet? I want to know. So not everybody that slides in the DM. Uh, okay. hey, DMs, I like the DM you. stories. Uh -huh. So it, it was off Instagram. I don't recommend it, but it was off Instagram. Yeah. And um, like you said, it might be someone that, that's once or is attracted to the Michi Zambia sweetheart yeah. and I had that fear like obviously you see what I deliberately put out there mm -hmm. I will not maybe post about my bad days or me in a bad mood so maybe you're attracted to this persona that's always like yay yeah. life let's do this so I, I had to be completely honest from the jump like hey yes I am a happy person but I'm this person that needs therapy from time to time because I'm depressed. <laughs> yeah. So it's showing, being deliberate about being vulnerable. Like, this is me. Mm -hmm. So take it or leave it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, it's about the hard work is in maintaining it. It hasn't mm -hmm. been in finding the person, but it's been in making it work. Uh, about um, that, 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 the fact that you've mentioned about um, uh therapy mm -hmm. you have been honest about your mental health i think like we've we've had chats mm -hmm. not in front of the camera and you've told me about how you've had your mental breakdown how do you handle it and how do you know that okay i think i need therapy um it's so there are certain things that through therapy i've, I've gotten to learn you know there are certain triggers when i start to feel a certain way i know that this might be a downward spiral and I might be headed towards a depressive episode, for lack of a better term. But um, I have a close circle of friends that I, I, I speak to. I, I, and just being open, and even with my partner, just being open and saying, this is how I'm feeling. I don't mm -hmm. understand why I'm feeling this way. And sometimes the sadness just comes like, boom. Mm -hmm. So I, the few times that I've sought out um, therapy, has been moments where I can't get out of it myself. Like, I will try everything. I'll go see my mom, I'll hang out with my mom, I will go to church, I will pray, I will talk to my friends, but I'm just stuck there and nothing is fun anymore. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, uh, I have to go to work. And then I know that this is not me because I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yay, let's go do radio. And then let's go do TV and then an interview. So when I feel like, I'm not excited about the things that I know I love. Yeah. Then there's a problem there. Where song I should have my chips. Potatoes I don't want to eat. Yeah. It's a problem. Then so there's telltale signs and it's not every time that I have gone I think I've been in therapy like proper proper actual standard seven sessions of therapy about twice. And a lot of it had to deal with stuff that I had to deal with that I hadn't dealt with, like yeah. the, in a in a in a work buried some stuff and yeah. And then you realize that someone would say something, then it you interpret it differently because of something that had hadn't been resolved as a child or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there was that part of therapy, and then also therapy with my partner. We have gone to therapy together before. Again, the work is, a, a relationship is work. Anyone that tries to sh sugarcoat it and as, oh, it's easy peasy, yeah. romance, yeah. my prince, yeah. and yeah, I'm roses the princess. every day. <laughs> nah, bruh. Yeah. So we have gone to together, which is something that I appreciate as well. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I don't think it's anything taboo, and I, I hope people can be more, more open about their 
experiences through life. Yeah, and especially uh, Africans, Zambians, we don't believe in therapy because we think uh, therapy is what you are going mad or something. Yeah, that's when you should. Wonder. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you should go for therapy. So I like that you are very open about it. So now I wanted to ask because you said like some things. Maybe you you have kept things that have happened. Did you ever, ever, or it's just things that happen in life as you grow up, you know, we face so many things, but is it, do you ever have maybe a traumatizing episode growing up that you think, I didn't deal with this and it keeps coming back in form of depression? Um, I was bullied. I was severely bullied. Um, and, ha, huh, this is always hard to talk about, but um, yeah. I actually don't think anyone there's one person that fully understands just how bad it was so I went to an all-girls school at some point mm -hmm. well the boarding side was all girls and some girls were really mean so I was really tall I was skinny some of them would do things like that I'll be sleepy and they'll come like sit on my bed and sit on me and they'll be like oh can't you you want to happen like you know like implying that yeah. you're so skinny and I think one bad episode was where they, I was in the shower and they, they removed the curtain. The curtains, yeah. And they got my towel. So I'm basically there and they called their friends, that Mwana Kashi, come and see. What? And now I'm there, like, you're, you're all naked. You. Yeah, and they're watching you. That. Yeah. yeah, that that was the worst. So I think the bullying was something that I hadn't dealt with. I kind of just like swiftly thought I swiftly moved past it. But of course, being in this space and, and having situations where I'm being bullied online, it started triggering like, why am I this person? Why am I the person that people feel they can yeah. bully? Why am I still going through this? And yeah, so it's... I think the bullying thing was something that I really had to deal with yeah. and just learn how to cope with, with certain things that life throws I at. feel bad. We only see that in movies. Oh, I thought we only, yeah. No, it, it was bad. It was yeah. bad. I had, I had a close friend in school, Priscilla. So Priscilla would like talk back. She was the talker. Mm -hmm. But then Priscilla left. Oh, okay. And then now it was like, eh, hey, uh -huh. away, can mm. but your friend has gone now. Now what? Uh, but something else that I've learned through life is, you know, um, certain things work out in a funny way. Something very bad happened to this person. And I'm not sorry. <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Yeah. If you're a bad person, karma, like, I mean. Karma. Yeah. Has to, and you know, that's the funny, most of these people that were like, stars in school you find that yeah the karma finally catches up yeah did you tell your mother when you're going through that did you try to open up and she did she knows i'm not trying to remember yo i'm trying to remember if she actually knows the shower story but yes um she she did get to know about it but more after the fact but then she actually said that when i'd come to see you you had this look like a scared animal like mm. So she d she did sense it, and if, I, I did end up leaving the school anyway. So, yay! Okay, and and now you are the Zambian sweetheart, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just tell me, you work so much. You you we see you. We radio whatever. Um, you're also a business lady. Yeah, we're getting into the business space. How's that going? Uh, it's going good. So, um, marketing, of course, is is something that I have as an, a, an actual academic qualification. Mm -hmm. And so, with my partner, we have um, gotten into the gaming space. So it's virtual reality. Mm -hmm. So it's called VR Go. Mm -hmm. And basically, we are we're offering a, a virtual reality experience. So it's through right now. It's through gaming. So you can come through and play games, and it's for everyone, different age groups. We've got games for the little kids. We've got games for the older people and there's exercise as well mm -hmm. and the other day i was boxing in virtual reality and i got so tired and i could feel my body like i'm actually boxing so it's a good workout it's okay. fun for the kids fun for the family fun for the workspace mm -hmm. uh, we do team building activities as well so it's fun it's different but it's, it's so much fun i would love to experience that i will bring it to you you should yeah, yeah. thank you so much michi for coming i enjoyed the conversation are we done you don't want to go? No. 
We can continue. But where is the food? Machanati, Mozambique, and Shani. There's no food. Where is the food? It's there. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, uh, but people are supposed to see the food, right? No, I can just eat it. I'll tell you how it tastes after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so there's Mozamb Mozambican food. Um, mm -hmm. Tell the camera crew to take the, food, the video, so just make sure that you guys can also have a, have a look at the food. So I enjoyed chatting with you, and I was, I was just telling you, I was like, this is purely going to be a conversation because I haven't prepared for this interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was a great conversation, actually. Thank you for having me, Helen. Yeah, thank you. Queen of talk shows. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> do, I, do I suit the title? Yes, you do. I mean, yeah. you've earned it. Thank you. You've earned it. Thank yeah. you. I would like to invite you for the African Food Festival. Want to come? Yes. We can sure. have the food? Yes. I'm such a foodie. Yeah. I love food. And the, there'll be... Uh, 32 countries let me get the numbers right different yeah. countries cooking different types of food so you, you have to be ready to try out different foods i look forward to it yeah Yay! on the first of october i'm so there thank See you. you thank you <laughs> any last words um obviously thank you so much for having me this has been fun and thank you for watching uh last words i just want to say be kind just be yeah. kind be kind it doesn't be cost kind. anything yeah be kind. Thank you so much, Michi. Thank you, Helen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Is it tuning in for coming to YouTube <laughs> and watching this episode and for subscribing to the channel? Thank you. We're almost getting to the to episode hundred. This is ninety. Ninety. I've forgotten the number. It's ninety. What? I've forgotten. But yeah, we're almost getting close to a hundred, and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for supporting. So first of October, the African Food Festival from the showgrounds main arena remember you can even get your tickets right here at rolex uh, restaurant in woodlands bye bye